Hi, welcome and thanks for coming out to Tech Tuesday today. Today we're, we've got Jennifer Golightly here, PhD in English Literature and our resident Canvas admin and person. <laughs> and she'll be talking about LTI apps, ways to enhance your Canvas course. Huge crowd, so I'll, this is going to be really informal. Feel free to jump in. Um, basically, I think this is just a good way to enrich your course material, and it seems like not many people know that these um, tools are available in Canvas. So um, I have a few that I'll show, but I wanted to show how to get to them first of all. Settings is how you get to them. Um, so on the bottom left-hand side, there are two buttons that say Settings in Canvas, but the one is the um, bottom left one that we're talking about. And then up here at the top, there's this tab called Apps. And there's a slew of them, actually, just a ton of them. Um, a couple of things, there's Minecraft. Um, there's all different kinds. Some of these are really lightweight integration. Some of them require more effort to get them in. Um, so I wanted to go through just a few of them, and I'll show you kind of what some of the um, interfaces look like. Don't be afraid to click on any of them. You are all empowered, all the faculty are empowered to add these apps to their courses whenever they want to. Some of them will require, like I said, a little bit more, like there's some Microsoft ones that require a little bit more to do, but that's what we're here, that's what we're here for. So um, if there are any that you want integrated that um, aren't, um, you can always contact me or Weston or Anna or Matt and we can look into it for you. Um, some of them will have instructions on how to get them into the course and some of them won't, which is kind of fun because then it becomes like a treasure hunt to figure out how to do it. Um, so some of these like Examity and um, I don't know, Evaluation Kit and uh, the Media Core and Cultura, those are going to be more advanced integrations that will require us to pay a lot of money to get the integration. Um, so we may or may not be able to do that. The Microsoft ones, there are a few of them. Theoretically, I think we should be able to get those in without too much trouble since we are a Microsoft school and already have some of the tools um, that they're offering here and why I can't find them right now is beyond me. Where did they go? Am I crazy? Um, oh, yep, yeah, I bet you're right. I'm just scrolling too fast. Um, office Mix, Office Hours, OneDrive for Business, and OneNote Class Notebook. Um, those are already tools. The OneNote and the OneDrive are tools that we have right now on the single sign-in page when you go to your email. So theoretically, those should be easy to do. I have played a little bit with them, and they're um, not as easy as one might hope. But if you click on them, it tells you, um, it gives you a little bit of a description about what the app is because some of them are not that intuitive. One of the app logos is actually just a blue cloud. So you kind of have to click on it to figure out what it is. Um, and it tells you, you know, what it does. Um, it lets you set up a OneNote environment for classes. Um, you can have a personal workspace for every student, a content library for handouts, a collaboration space for lessons, yada yada, sounds great. Um, this integration allows a teacher to create a notebook and add it to their LMS course without leaving the learning environment. Um, to find out more, you go to the information page. Now, what's important here is it says to register for a consumer key and shared secret. Um, you go to the information page. That's useful information to have in the description. Um, some of them you'll click add app, they'll have almost no description and you'll see this and you'll have no idea how to get the consumer key or the shared secret. So in those cases you can either contact support for that particular company or just contact me and I'll get it worked out. Some of them are much easier to integrate. Um, for instance there's Dropbox which you can pretty much just click and turn on. Um, there's some other ones that uh, function similarly. Box is another one like Dropbox that you can pretty much just add app. Um, oh, I lied about that one. Never mind. Uh, Dropbox you can just add. I've already turned on YouTube for the entire campus. We've also just added an LTI integration with Films on Demand, which is a database that the library has to full-length movies. Um, so now in the rich content editor, when you go onto a Canvas page, it works the way that the YouTube integration works, and I'll show you a couple of these in a minute, but um, where you can just search the database for films right there from the page. You don't have to go out to Films on Demand or anything like that. It's all done right inside the right inside the page. Um, so quite a few of these, and um, I have a few down that we can go through, but I'll just show you what a couple of them look like. 
One, some of them, um, and the configuration, it'll tell you, if you view the app configurations, it'll tell you where the app is going to show up. So this is my demo course, so I've just kind of thrown everything I possibly can in here that I, you know, could do pretty easily. So I've got YouTube, I've got Twitter, I've got Trello, I've got SlideShare, I've got the Redirect tool, I've got Quizlet, Prulu, um, all kinds of stuff, iMath, AS, um, all of these, and it shows you like where they're going to show up. So if you look at placements, it tells you, okay, it's going to be in the course navigation. And what that means is that it's going to show up somewhere here on the left side of the course page. Okay. If it says that it's going to be like YouTube, for instance, it's the editor button. It's also the assignment selection. So if your students wanted to submit a YouTube video as part of their assignment, they could do that. Um, and then link selection. You can, um, when you select a link, you can go out to YouTube and get the link. So editor button means that when you're on a course page, you will have that icon. And you can just, so if I click edit here on this page, um, this is my Quizlet button. So that's the tool in the rich content editor. This little carroty tool means more external tools, and that's just because I slammed so many in here. But here's YouTube, and if I click on it, it's just a nice, easy way to embed content from YouTube without having to go out to YouTube and copy and paste the embed code. I can do it right here from inside the course. I can preview the videos from inside the course. I can select what size I want the embedded video to be, all that good kind of stuff. Um, so a couple of them in the navigation menu, Feed the Me is a, like an RSS feed that you can pull into your course. So everybody know what an RSS feed is? RSS feeds are um, basically a way of subscribing to, like if you have a journal that you read, like the, um, the Wall Street Journal or The Economist or The Atlantic, and you don't want to go to their website, you want them to send you the articles, that's what an RSS feed does. So it's a way of subscribing, usually without paying, and it just pushes the content to you instead of you having to go out and get it. Um, so I've got a couple of them in here. I've got 18th Century Life and an untitled feed, which is not helpful because it did it a year ago and I don't know what it is, but... <clears throat> something, um, oh, it's the Afroben, <laughs> that's what it is, um, Afroben Public, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's one I'm associated with, I should have remembered that, anyway, um, so you can see that this is a nice way to enhance the content in your course, if there's a journal or a magazine that you think is particularly germane to the subject of your course, then it's really easy to pull these articles in for your students, and they can read them, and stay current, and fresh, and find subject matter for papers, and Topics for exploration and all that good kind of stuff. Um, yep. Feed the me. That is feed the me. Um, the other one that I really do enjoy, even though it's a little funky, is Quizlet. And Quizlet um, is a way of creating flashcards. Actually. It's a way, you can do both. So if you go to Quizlet.com, you can create your own flashcards. If you go use the LTI integration, you can look at Quizlet flashcards that other people have created. They're all public and pull them into your course, which is kind of, I like it and I don't like it. It's hard to find exactly what you want. Um, I have played a little bit with building my own set of flashcards on Quizlet.com and then searching for them through the LTI integration. Not as easy as you might hope, <laughs> um, but theoretically doable. Um, so I'll, I, I'll keep playing with it. But the flashcards are kind of nice um, because they work, you know, it's embedded in the course. It's a nice way to um, include some extra resources for your students if they're looking to brush up on, you know, if they're in an introductory level course and they have terms that they need to memorize or um, things that they just need to get more familiar with so that it's, you know, um, so that they have their, their baseline knowledge down, then this is a good tool to use. So I just have some literary terms here. And you can do different study modes with this. So you can do scatter, for instance, and it will um, play like little learning games with them. So it scatters all the terms and you kind of drag and drop and I'm not paying attention so but anyway once you get it right it goes away and you can just keep matching things yep is that something that you can just set up in your course and then the students can just access it more easily from there because mm -hmm. I mean, well, and yeah, so basically, let me show you what it looks like here. So if I go to edit and I wanted to add another Quizlet, let's say. The other thing to note, 
once you use these tools in the rich content editor, it always looks like it's broken when you're in edit mode. It's not broken. If you see this gray screen, that means that it's embedded, but you've got to go to the view side. You've got to save and go out to the student view, basically, to be able to see it. So if I click this Quizlet button, it um, works kind of the way that the YouTube one does. So you can search for a topic. So if you wanted to do anatomy, for example, this is kind of where I'm like, eh, on the fence. Because I don't know these people. And I don't know whether I, you know, it, what are the odds of my finding a flashcard deck that is going to include everything that I want it to. So that's one thing. But some of them are pretty thorough. And you can see it shows you how many terms are glossed. So this one's got 77. This one's got 87. This one's got 176. So, um, you know, you could kind of throw it in there and go through it. But you don't, that way you're kind of crowdsourcing educational resources rather than building them yourself. So it depends on um, how comfortable you are with, you know, that crowdsourced stuff. But is that something that students can look at that list and pick from Quizlet? They could if, so if you went into, if you created a wiki page, let's say, and you said, you know what, anybody can edit this page, then they can quick click on that Quizlet button and they should be able to see all of those lists and choose their flashcard deck. Now, that's going to probably result in, like, if they go, because they won't be able to see it unless they save it. So that means potentially you have 25 students saving 25 different Quizlets to the same page. Um, but that might be okay. Like, that might be their, their sandbox page or something like that. And you might just say, hey, do what you will, you know. So. We'll put, Jennifer, each of those Quizlets that you saw on that page are, are right now publicly accessible mm -hmm. on the Quizlet. Yeah, they are. So they could, so they could just go to Quizlet.com. Quizlet Quizlet they could. But this way, you're having faculty right. or teachers go in here and they choose one. Yep. And then they can say, you guys need to learn these for the, the test. Or make sure right. you know all of these terms for the, for the, the final. Mm -hmm. And what I, I mean, I created one last week, basically, and I tried to make it something that I would find easily because I thought how many people could really have novel terms or 18th century novel? Quite a few as it turns out way more than you would think. So um, I couldn't find my own which has happened to me with SlideShare too. When I tried to use the SlideShare LTI integration I put one of my own slide decks on SlideShare and then tried to find it through this and it's I don't know if it's just the quantity of information available, or what it must be. I can't think of what else it would be. Sites have a vetting process for the peer reviews. Everything is by default public. Yeah. I wonder if I put. Um, oh wait, wait, wait! No, I didn't make thirteen terms. Dang it! I got all excited because this is November 9th, but I guess it would have been December 9th. I did not. So, I mean, you could play with it and call it Sparkly Fairy Unicorn Go Lightly or something and see if that makes it a little easy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. And 25 Sparkly Fairy Unicorns come up. Yeah. That's it's always a possibility. I have been I have been surprised actually with stuff like this. Um so those the Quizlet one basically you click add app and it's in there. Um, same with the YouTube, um, same with Dropbox. Prulu, I'm not sure I even remember what that is because I put it in so long ago. Um, let's see. Search questions, ask a question. Hmm. How about Feed the Me? Feed the Me is that RSS feed that we... Oh. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, so basically what I wanted to encourage everybody to do today is just be aware that these are here and are possible. Um, the Microsoft OneNote integration is something that I think we will be exploring in more depth with Microsoft. They want to come they want to come do a play date, Anthony, like Apple did, except um, we wouldn't let them do it the way that Apple did it. So um, we may take them up on that and have them just come kind of show us what's possible with that integration. There is another Microsoft tool that is called Sway that is supposed to be, um, 
I don't know, all kinds of cool hoopa juice stuff. Uh, I don't even know if they have it on here. Um, they talked about it at the Canvas conference, and um, basically it's a way of making your PowerPoints interactive. So you can include a video, but then you can also include like surveys, like the slide deck video gets to a certain point, and then it stops and asks the student a question, and they have to respond in order to go on, and so on and so forth. So that's something potentially that we could use in Canvas as well. Um, uh, it's called Sway. Office Sway. Yep. I do think that we have it on our... Yeah, we do. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that we've got it here in the... Um, yep, there it is. Sway. So play with that. Um, the other one that might be good to know about is OER Commons. OER Commons is the Open Educational Resource Commons. So all kinds of open educational resources are in here. I do share faculty skepticism sometime about open resources because I, again, don't know whose they are, but, um, you know, with a little vetting, sometimes these things are really valuable to add to your course. They can be good for um, just course enrichment if there's things that, you know, you can't get to in the course face-to-face um, -face meeting, then you can put it in Canvas. You can use some of these apps to kind of enhance what the students are doing and learning. So. Anything that I need to cover that I did not cover with these integrations? Uh, what? Well, yes, and I will say it. Yes. <laughs> um, if you have an app that you'd like to try out, yeah, uh, you have multiple people who are willing right. participants. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a test course, you want to see what it looks like from a student or what it would look like for a student to do it, we are happy to be your students. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. That way you have an idea of what it looks like from your end, and you can see what it looks like from our end as well, mm -hmm. because we're always happy to help people, or at least I'm always happy to help people experiment and try new things, because I like trying yep. new things too, Yep. And, and that's the way we learn, that's the way we get experience and do things better. Yep, I totally agree, yeah. I think there are some... Um, I might be lying, but I think there are like some simulation-type things in here, so... Um, I mean, there's just so many apps in here that I can't even keep track of what all of them do. They do update this list of apps constantly. They are always adding new LTI integrations here. So um, if there's one that looks particularly interesting to you, um, just hit me up if you can't figure out how to get it integrated, and, and um, we'll work on it and get it figured out. Yep. Yep. So I just tried to add Feed the Media, mm -hmm. and it asked for it. That is interesting. How did I add feed the me? I did it last year. Placement, delete, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, um, I... Th I don't know. I, you know, I did this last year when I first started. I don't even remember. No, that's okay. I didn't see that it actually went further than the speed of the bike was going to In order to use this tool, you have to generate a TV show. Oh, you have to generate it. Okay. Via Twitter. Yeah. That's why it's Gen Go Light. So, because it's pulling, it doesn't actually do anything with my Twitter feed. It just is using Twitter as a way to establish that I have a login, basically, or a, an account. Um, you can, um, create one that you never use or, yeah, um, something like that. There, there may be other possibilities in the App Center as well that you could use to pull stuff like that in, um, that we could take a look at. And there may be workarounds too, um. We could potentially just make one for us. For us, that, that yeah. Just we could. We could just make, like, stuff. innovative tech or something like that that, um, you can just plug in for that kind of thing so that you don't have to have a personal one. Command that. Yeah. In addition to our email string. Mm -hmm. Yep. That might be an easy thing to do and probably useful for a couple different sorts of things. So, yeah, if you want to do that, let me know, Anthony, and we'll set that up for you. Okay, and I just thought I'd try to maybe RSS uh, some journals. Mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely. Well, um, just let me, we'll get that done, and then I'll email it to you, and you can set it up. Uh, another idea that just occurred to me, because Jen brought it up last week, um, uh, the librarian's live guides. Yeah. So each, 
department, each division has a, you know, each department has a liaison librarian, and the librarians are always looking for things to do. <laughs> Many of the librarians have live guides, so subject matter uh, web pages that they've created and that they curate mm -hmm. to uh, point to library resources. And I believe that um, we were looking at an LTI integration for those so that the students would be able to access those guides straight from within here, within campus. And it's, it works. I'll show you. It's the redirect tool. And the redirect tool app is, um, if you go to the redirect tool in here, if you scroll down to the R's, P, Q, R, it's this one. It's the arrow. And you can add it and basically um, what you do is you put in the URL for what you want it to redirect to. So I just put in the, the URL for the lab guides, um, the website that the lab guides run, and it puts it into the course navigation. So you can actually see down here at the bottom, maybe you can't see, but it's there. Redirect tool is what it says. What frustrated me about it is that you can't, Canvas doesn't let you edit the names of the course navigation buttons. So it's forever redirect tool. So if I put in another one here that's like, you know, what Jane saw dot org. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nope, I'm stupid. You can do it here. Yay, okay. I don't have to be irritated with it anymore. That's right. Okay, where did it go? I don't know, because that should be the live guides. Unless it replaced it. Can you only have one at a time? Hmm. Yeah, I think I might have to follow up on this one. I don't know where it went. I wonder if you can only have one at a time. That would be annoying. Always. Always, always, always. Let's see. I go in here and come back in. Anyway, the redirect tool, it looks like you can rename it. So I can rename that Live Guides thing, or I could have when I did it. Um, and it would say Live Guides. So never mind. My complaint is not a complaint anymore. Bogus. Bogus, exactly. <laughs> totally is. I don't know where that went. Yeah, I think that it may be that you can only add one with the redirect tool, which is kind of lame. Um, but the nice thing about the redirect tool is that it adds it to the course navigation. So if there's an external something that you want them to look at that is important, like that, you know, the live guides, if those are important for your course or something else, you can add it to that course navigation menu. It's harder for them to miss. Um, and then you can link to it in all sorts of other places. Let's see where it goes now. Nope, still the live guides. So um, you can link to it, you know, um, on the pages. If you had like a home page here, it's really easy to link to course navigation things um, that way. So you can just insert a link to course navigation and you can choose your, you know, your redirect tool, wherever it is. Maybe it's not even, maybe it's not even there. Maybe it's only the fixed ones that they have in there. Anyway, but you can link to it um, with the other link tool on the page. Any other questions? Anything else that I, Weston, that you can think of? Yeah. So some of the bigger picture stuff that we're working on, and I know Jennifer did a big pilot of this um, right for free she first got here. I put her into the pilot. Um, is some of the stuff around digital media, so audio and video original content, Drew Cultura or Media Core, something like that. Those are one of those big pay to play style things. Um, so there is a, a, a bigger audience out there, which is why we're trying to, to uh, facilitate that. But a lot of these LTIs that we have a very small audience for, you know, we're really relying on departments. Trying to find the funding. Um, since we joined Internet 2, um, I'm not sure how much you guys know about Internet 2. It's just uh, it's a consortium that we have uh, direct line connections to a lot of other research universities that we have very fast internet. But we also have free 
um, negotiated contract with a lot of these companies over the years. So I know we're substantially saving money with Canvas through our new internet theme collaboration. So we're going to use some of that uh, license savings to possibly purchase some of these additions into the, the Canvas infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we really want people to start getting into this and, and finding ones that they are excited yep. about because we're going to really try to break even uh, on what our cost is and, and get some of these LTIs so we can do whatever we can with that, that money to make the future a lot better. But um, depending on the LTI, you know, a lot of it is going to be like individual departments. Uh, but for some of the bigger ones, you know, we're certainly going to uh, run additional pilots down the road to identify some of the bigger ticket items um, that we can add as a mm -hmm. campus resource versus just a department or individual. Well, and it may be that some of these, <coughs> excuse me, some of these may be great for teaching. Some of them you may you know, read if you if you have time and you're just kind of playing around and you look at some of the descriptions of these, some of them you may find a use for that is administrative or is related to other functions on campus. I think ideally what would be nice is if as much as possible, I don't think it's going to solve every problem under the sun. I, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not trying to evangelize about Canvas that much, but I do think that it would be nice since we have it, it's a tool that we all can use. Um, as many things as we can put into it to make it meet as many needs as possible, I think is a good thing. So if you see integrations that you think, gee, this would be great for searches, like there's, I don't know, there's a portfolio thing that we could use for evaluating student work over, you know, for assessment and that kind of stuff. Um, if you see, if you're on committees or anything like that, and you see tools that um, could be used in those capacities, then I think that's great and let's explore them because ultimately, um, you know, I, I am seeing tons and tons of use of Canvas across um, administrative offices. So the dean's office, the president's office is using it, the board of trustees uses it. Yeah, departments are using it for searches, they're using it for tenure and review. Um, so if there's stuff like that, if there are tools that will make that easier, then I'm all about it and let's look into them, you know. Yeah. Just for there are two, two things that I want to mention. Mm -hmm. They're not, one of them is LTI and one of them. So one of the apps that's in here, would you scroll down to the bottom? Yep. There, I think there are a couple of YouTube apps, and one of them is like YouTube. For okay, schools. One of them is YouTube for schools. One of them is a YouTube that you can just put the YouTube link in. Mm -hmm. I think the YouTube broadcast yourself it. No. You be there. there. There was one YouTube, I thought there was one YouTube app where it would actually let you, instead of recording into Canvas, it would record onto YouTube and then link that video into Canvas. Hmm. Maybe that was the YouTube. <coughs> Maybe they took it out. I don't know. I think you have to create an existing video and put it in a YouTube. Oh, okay. Access. Okay, but the other thing that is really neat, I think, one of the other neat things in Canvas is the uh, web conference mm -hmm. feature. You can actually let somebody sh have somebody share their screen that's outside of the classroom. Um, into your screen so that everybody so that everybody in the thing can see if your students all have swine flu or, or something like that you can actually have class online in here and so you can you can have them share their screen or you can share a whiteboard and, and co-annotate the whiteboard you can have the webcam up there and do the voice web conference all through canvas and that's the conferences tool, and the it is an app. They'll show it in the apps, which baffles me because it's already in there. But um, it's big blue button is the tool. It's not my favorite tool in the world for that, but it works. I use it at DU actually because um, I teach hybrid flex courses there, which is um, interesting. Um, well, because they're not really set up for it, but they're starting to try to get there. So basically, what I do is I take my husband's MacBook and I get into the conference through Canvas and then I turn it around so that the webcam is facing my students and turn the volume up and fingers crossed they can hear each other. The ones who are in California can hear the ones sitting in Denver and the ones sitting in Denver can kind of hear the ones in California and then sometimes I have to turn it back around and show them the whiteboard if I write anything on it. So um, if you're not trying to do that kind of a crazy thing, like if like Weston says you have somebody that you want to bring in and just let the students, like it would be really easy to 
have somebody web conference in um, a colleague or somebody in your profession or something like that and just, you know, hook it up to the projector, put in the speaker plug, and away you go. You've got kind of a guest lecturer for the day. We actually used it three weeks ago at Tech Tuesday when uh, we had that big snowstorm on Tuesday. We've got Diane Westerfield from her house on the east side with all the snow onto campus via Canvas. Yep. And, and she was the presenter. And yeah. she was the presenter, so, so that was, yeah. that was an entertaining. And there are other um, there are other interactive whiteboard and video conferencing tool web conferencing tools in Canvas <laughs> um, in those apps. Um, so if there's one that looks interesting to you, if it's not, if Big Boo Button isn't doing it, you know, for what you need, let us know. We can look into some of those. I have not looked at that one. Um, that is a textbook one, is it not? Do they have like textbook resources? Yeah. But that's what the app does, I think, is just pulls in some of that. Yeah, they have, a, they have their own online system called Connect. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried that one, but um, I mean. I'm just looking at a second textbook. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. McGraw Hill Campus. Yeah. Yeah, let us know. I mean, and that's the other thing. If you do try any of these apps and you're blown away by them, get back in touch with one of us and let us know what it was so that we can consider. Because I can turn these on for the entire campus um, if we want to, or we can leave it at the course level either way. Or if you're not blown away by it. Yeah, that's probably important, too. If it underwhelms you, <laughs> let us know. Yep. Recommend people steer clear of that one. Yeah, but tell us the underwhelming one in a very exciting manner. <laughs> With jazz hands. <laughs> this one really sucks. Don't use it. Yep. All right, well, thank you all for coming. I have Weston has chocolate. If you're um, in that 3 o'clock slump and need a sugar hit, Weston's got some chocolate. And stylish pens. Oh, yes, stylish pens that have styluses on the end of them. Yep. Stylus or stylus? <laughs> stylus, stylus. <laughs>